Welcome to Levisys. Um, thanks for watching the Alive in the Crack series. We're delighted to be putting on um, these shows and working with artists and crews. And it's all thanks to the Department of Culture. I am. Um, we're very grateful to the support from the Department of Culture and Mr. Catherine Martin. Tonight we've got an amazing uh, group, um, the McGlynn Brothers. They've been with us now for four or five years. Uh, we can't keep them away. <laughs> so come on out back and give it up for ye vagabonds. Woo! Hello. <laughs> um, we're ye vagabonds. Welcome to the gig. This is a uh, gig number six, I believe, of the Live in the Cracks series. Is that what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Alive in the Cracks. Ah, okay. So here it is, Ye Vagabonds Alive in Levis's and Bally de Ham. Uh, we're delighted to be here. I think we played one of our first uh, full gigs that we ever did um, here more or less six years ago more or less to the day um, as well so anyway it's nice to be back always but, um, I'll, I'll say something in a minute maybe Dermot will say something in a minute when he's on a microphone yeah. um, this is a song called The Foggy Jew mm -hmm.
Hey, how's it going? So, um, this, uh, this kind of temperature kind of takes us back to uh, the days when we were, before we used to play gigs at all. We used to just uh, busk on Tolo Street in Carlo. And uh, we used to wear two pairs sometimes of Penny's fingerless gloves on each hand. And um, Breen was just recalling one time we, I guess it was like the only money we used to make probably at the time. Um, it was easier to find, easier to, to busk than to, to find a job back then. And um, also Breen was a, a small child. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we uh, we used to have to go out in the in the snow and hail um, to to earn our keep back in those days. And, uh, it's, it's a while since we've had a gig in. A similar kind of atmosphere for our fingers. Yeah. <laughs> it's a I've, lot friendlier than Carlo, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so far, anyway, none of you have threatened us with knives or tried to rob us. Um, <laughs> not that that actually ever happened in Carlo, to be fair. Um, we'll sing you a song that we learned from the singing of Sarah Maycom. It's a, a sad, unrequited love song. Um, a little bit probably pathetic in tone, to be fair. Um, it seems like the moral of the, of the story of this song is that you should not go to your ex's wedding. Yeah. Um, especially yeah. if you're still really in love with them. Yeah. And, de and if you do go to their wedding, definitely don't sit down to them. Don't sit down at the table with them um, at dinner. You'll see anyway. <laughs> it doesn't work out for the fella in this song. Really, so. no. It's called I Courted a Wee Girl. It's actually the first time I've sung it in uh, months. I courted a wee girl for many a long day And I slighted all others that came in my way And well she's rewarded me to the last day For she's gone to be wed to another Another She's gone to be wed to Well, the bride and bride's party to church they did go The bride went in foremost, she bore the best show And I followed after, my heart full of woe To see my love wed to another Another, to see my love wed to Bride and bride's party in church they did stand Gold rings on her fingers, her love by the hand And the man she was wed to had houses and land He may have her since I could not gain her Since I could not gain her And the first time I saw her 
She was dressed all in white The more I looked on her She dazzled my sight I lifted my hat And I bid her good night And you to all false-hearted lovers Lovers And you to all false-hearted Next time I saw her, she was leaving down me. I sat down beside her, not a bite could I eat. For I thought my love's company far better than me. For love was the cause of my ruin. My ruin, for love was the cause of my ruin So it's dig me a grave And dig it down deep And strew it all over With the roses so sweet And lay me down silent No more for to My ruin for love was the cause of my ruin. Thanks. How are you all? You all right? Yeah. Good, yeah. The masks kind of almost keep you a bit warmer, don't they? tunes <laughs> uh, simmer down there now <laughs> I know it's very exciting but uh... <laughs> yeah. um, these are a pair of tunes we learned from our friend Emmett Gill who's a piper um, who grew up in London and based in Dublin. Um, he learned them from Willie Clancy, I think. They're, uh, both the tunes are called The Humours of Glynn, uh, which is our surname, so uh, that's also why we like them. Um. I think they're <laughs> written by a Waterford Piper yeah. called Something Power. I can't remember his first name, but his surname is Power. And there's another kind of Waterford... Ernesto. Ernesto Power. <laughs> Ernesto, is it? Yeah, it seems likely that it would be yeah. Ernesto. Um. A uh, strong water for Dame like Ernesto. Um, <laughs> uh, there's yeah, there's there's another Waterford themed song that involves someone by the name of Power that we might sing for you in, a, in another little bit. That also mentions a townland called Glynn, which this is probably named after. There you go. So there you go. You'll we'll weave that in later on. Uh, did I tune this? I did. Did I just tune it? Did, did you just see me tune this? Yeah, I did. you did. Okay, had a bit of a moment there. Senior, <laughs> senior moment. I'm the elder one in the in the group. <laughs> if you could, yeah. yeah. Okay, you can tell. Yeah. As Joe knows, I'll be going into retirement soon enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. 
For a second. <laughs> it's, uh, this is the harmonium down here, by the way. Uh, doing 
its thing. Um, I love how there's a super sir here. Um, <laughs> it kind of feels like playing in our old garage. Yeah, my, <laughs> my, my, my abiding memory of, of the super sir is like yeah. our dad put the old, when we got a, a new television, he put the old television out in the garage and it was this like wooden framed television. Mitsubishi. Out, Mitsubishi, yeah, it was actually a Mitsubishi. Yeah. Uh, so that he could watch the hurling while so he, he was could watch and stuff. He, well, he'd be out. He'd, be, <laughs> he'd disappear. He'd disappear ostensibly to fix something in the garage, and he'd take out the something with him, and then he'd be gone for ages. And you'd go out, and he'd be sitting there in in a body warmer jacket with his hat on, a bottle of Heineken in his hand, the Super Sir on, and the Tipperary match on. Just like yeah. <laughs> on the old TV. I nearly fell over there. Um, You're just losing your mind with. With nostalgic excitement, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, hold on now. Yeah, we have fond memories of the old super, sir. Your disappearing dad. Yeah. <laughs> Man caving it to the max. Yeah. Um, yeah. They actually moved to Donegal. They left Carlo and moved back to where our mum is from a few years ago. And then... Um, have since that since then he's basically continued building sheds kind of like about <laughs> one shed per two years more or less our, our um, dad actually does he produces another shed every <laughs> every every two to three years how often does a does a snake shed <laughs> <laughs> our dad sheds he every sheds. couple of years <laughs> anyway, mm. we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna another, continue uh, with the waterford theme yeah. um so this is yeah. It's, a, it's an acapella song, so I can sit there with me. With your tea in your Musical hand. Item. Um, <laughs> your, your tea in your hand. Um, so this is uh, I, I I ended up I love this next song that we're about to sing. I learned it from a recording of uh, a man called Straighty Flanagan from County Clare, which is a fucking brilliant name as well. Um, Michael Straighty Flanagan. Uh, <laughs> And he used to, he was a street singer and he'd sing down at the uh, Milltown at the festival. And um, he ha he, there's a handful of songs that only, he's the only recorded singer of them. And there's, he, there's ballad sheets of these songs, but there's no recorded melody apart from his recordings. He's a really cool singer, he's a really interesting voice. And uh, this song is really unusual. I ended up researching it a good bit to try and find out what the history of it was. And um, well actually, maybe I'll tell you the, a little bit of the history after the song. I'll sing the song first. <clears throat> well, even the Kerry the Hangman is a good one too. Oh yeah, before. okay. So, yeah. Dermot kind of went and discovered that this song is based on a real person, and that there's loads of bits to the song that are based on things that did happen. Yeah, um, but I'll tell you a bit more about that. But there's a a hangman's a hangman is mentioned, and that was one of the ways that I was able to. Uh, find out some stuff about this song because it mentions Carrie the Hangman in the Straighty Flanagan version. But when I went and found the the lyrics of it in a PW PW in the PW Joyce collection, PW Joyce was a folklorist and he was James Joyce's cousin. When he, when he published his like twentieth book and James Joyce still wasn't able to publish his second, James Joyce the the book he published PW Joyce published was called Names and Places of Ireland or something, and. Uh, James Joyce was famously quoted as having said, shite and onions to name the names and places of Ireland. Um, but uh, P.W. Joyce collected a, a version of this song and it, instead of Carey, the hangman, it says Carefew, the hangman. But we still sing Carey. But I'll tell you more about that in a second. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> On my road to Dungarvan in search of some fowl, Near to Ballytown, crystal out pistol I found. I met the postboy with his bag in his hand. I presented my pistol and soon bid him stand with me to reload, do reload, dingle I day. For mercy, for mercy, the postboy did cry. And this is the way I've to earn my hire. To support an old woman, a child and a wife I will give you the bag if you spare me me life with me To reload, do reloading a lie day 
I told him to stand in a wood that was nigh. I bid him stand there till his bag I would try. In one of his letters a fifty pound note directed to Exford to one Michael Power with me to Rolo, do Rolo, dingle I day. I gave him his bag and I bid him goodbye. I said I'll go further, more vengeance to try. The next man I met was a mounted dragoon. I presented my pistol and bid him stand soon with me to reload, do reload, dingle I day. His sword and his pistol I tied to my waist. With his belt and his buckle I then walked away. If the captain will miss them, you know he will. Sure, you can tell him you lent them to one Michael Power with me to reload, do reload, ding a day. I did not go far when what should I see? Four yeomen well armed coming up close to me. The first three that came up, sure I shot them down dead. And I followed the old sergeant and cut off his head with me to reload, do reload, dingle I day. I went into Carrick and slept there that night. I woke early next morning, I got a great fright. Twelve yeomen well armed, they broke down the door. And I left them all bleeding, stretched dead on the floor with me to reload, do reload, dingle I day. I paid for my lodgings and did not delay. I loaded my pistol and then walked away. I met an informer and he going to the fair and he riding a beautiful Foxington mare with me to reload, do reload, ding a lie day. I went into Carrick to a place they call Glynn. I met Carey the hangman, he had to drop in. He looked at my face and he said, I am sure that you're the bold hero called Brave Michael Power with me to reload, do reload, ding a lie day. He offered to box me in a yard that was there. The first tip I gave him left him in despair. For you'll hang any more, my arms will tell, and they'll send your old soul gone blazing to hell with me to reload, do reload, dingle I day. And now you have heard my comical song, I hope you're all pleased I have said nothing wrong. The next time you come, sure, I'll tell you some more about the old pistol and brave Michael Power with me to reload, do reload, dingle, I day. So, have any of you ever heard of uh, Tories and not the political party, well even the political party uh, over in the UK, so that actually we can start there. The political party over in the UK, do you know how they got their name? Actually I feel like a teacher now asking questions, anyone know how? The, uh, so they were named the Tories because when they formed the new Conservative Party, uh, the, the Whigs, the other lads, wanted to kind of uh, Put the kind of ruin their reputation, so they did so by trying to kind of they they created this conspiracy to associate them with this famous highwayman in Ireland, in the north of Ireland. Highwaymen in Ireland at the time were called Tories. It comes from the Irish word for kind of hunter or hunted person or something like that. Um, and uh, so then when they tried to associate Redmond O'Hanlon with the, the new Conservative Party, the name stuck to the Conservative Party and they were called the Tories. But um, characters like Redmond O'Hanlon came about because of in Crom the Cromwellian era, new laws meant that like Irish sort of gentry got kicked off their lands. So people who'd been on their lands for, for a long time and owned their lands for a long time suddenly were told, this isn't your land anymore. And some of them kind of spurned the law and took to the road and went around 
robbing, in, dressed as, still as the gentlemen that they saw themselves as, went around robbing these other new gentlemen, these English gentlemen on the highways. So Redmond O'Hannon was one of those. And then when I was researching this song, I discovered there was a highwayman called Captain Richard Power, who this song is more than likely based about that song we were just singing. Um, and the weird thing about it is the song, he's this really amoral character who just goes around killing everyone. And it's kind of like a weird spaghetti western where he just shoots everyone down, 12 people come in, he just kills them all and decapitates someone. I think like kill counts by the fourth verse is like 16 or something like that. Um, but uh, in reality, the, the character Captain Richard Power it's, it's the opposite of what usually happens. Usually they kind of romanticize these kind of robber characters and make them into Robin Hoods. But in this case, he actually was a really Robin Hood kind of a character. And there's a great story of a time when he d d dressed as a kind of in disguise as an ordinary traveler on the road, stopped into this uh, poor farmer looking for lodgings for the night. The farmer was complaining to him that he had no money to pay even his, he was, you know, apologizing for the state of the place and not having much food, told him he didn't even have enough money to pay for his rent. And the landlord was probably going to come and evict him the following day. So Captain Power said, well, okay, I can lend you some money, lent him a substantial amount of money, went away. Then the landlord arrived the next day, came, saw that your man had money, decided to take all the money that he had, making up claims for other debts that he owed making it all up as soon as he saw how much money was there he's like I'll take all of that and the landlord goes off anyway the landlord is nearly back at his house when a highwayman jumps out from behind a bush or something robs him of course that highwayman was Captain Power robbing his own money back that he had lent to the farmer then he goes back to the farmer here's the story the landlord in the meantime has told the the farmer that uh, he had been robbed and that his, his money was bad, ba there was bad luck on the money or something like that. And then Captain Power goes back to the farmer and says, uh, dressed again as a traveler, here's the whole tale told and cancels the debt. He says, ah, oh, you don't have to pay me back for that, so it's fine. So that's the kind of person he really was. <laughs> and then this song, he's just this psychotic, pistol whipping <laughs> lunatic. So there you go. True story. True story. Um. Um. We're going to sing you a song that we just... We only just started singing and performing a bit recently. Um. Basically, this... This young lad apparently comes back from... He goes out walking and he sees his uh, his fiance who, and she doesn't recognize him because he's been away at war for a couple of years. Um, so he decides to play a trick on her but kind of takes it a bit too far. Um, she says, oh, he says, will you marry me? And she says, no, I can't because I'm waiting on my fella to get back from war. And then um, he says, oh, no way, I was, I was out at that battle. What was his name? And she says his name and he says, oh, he actually died in my arms and was crying out your name as he died, his last breath. And of course she breaks down crying. And then he says, ah, I'm only messing. It's just me. <laughs> um, but um, anyway. That's the gist of it, yeah. yeah. And then he says, will you actually marry me? But you don't, you don't hear what she says after that um, at all. So. Yeah, you don't get to hear her response. No, it's probably her mantle's so green.
As I was a walking one evening in June to view the fair fields and the meadows in blue, I spied a pretty fair maid. She appeared like a queen in her costly fine robes and her mantle. When I stepped up to her, she turned in surprise And she did not know me, though I wore no disguise Her eyes shone like diamonds, her cheeks like the rose She is one of the fairest that nature composed I said, now, my fair maid, if you'll come with me, we may both join in wedlock and marry we'll be. I would dress you in rich attire, you'll appear like a queen in your costly fine robes and your mantle so green. She says, now, my young man, I must be excused. For I'll wed with no man, you must be refused. To the green woods I will wander, to show no man's view. For the boy I love dearly fell and fame. And since you cannot marry me, will you tell me your love's name? As I fought in that battle, I might know the same. Draw near to my garment, for there can be seen. His name is embroidered on my mantle. At the raising of her garments, there I did behold His name and his surname in letters of gold Young Willie O'Reilly appeared to my view And he was my chief comrade in the fame Fought there together where the bullets did fly. On the field of battle, your tune of the slide. We fought for three days till the fourth afternoon. He received his death summons on the eighth. And as he lay dying, these words he did say If you were here, lovely Nancy, how contented I die When she heard this sad tale, then her tears they did flow She fell into my arms with a heart full of
lovely Nancy, it was I won your heart. In your father's garden, the day we did part. In your father's garden, the truth I declare. Here is our lovely token, this gold ring. And if you still have me, one word to me say. And we'll feast with great nobles on our wedding day. For peace is proclaimed and the war is his own. You're welcome to my arrows, lovely Nancy. sing you a song now um, this is a, it's a Scottish song we learned it from a singer from Aberdeen called Scylla Fisher um, and uh, it's about these young lads that used to go they were like travelling labourers in, uh, in Scotland um, that up until maybe the 1950s or 60s um, that would have been going around and staying in these little houses that they built around the highlands called Bothies you can still go stay in Bothies, they're all over the place. Um, um, but they were kind of built as little labourers, houses. And then apparently the lads who used to go stay in them anyway, a lot of them were Irish, um, from like Mayo and Donegal and stuff. Apparently they weren't to be trusted um, at all. This is kind of a cautionary tale. Um, should any of you find yourselves as a young woman in 18th century Scotland in a folk song, um, you'll know what to do. Um, to stay well away from them. So um, it's called the Bati Lads. Well, it 
it's all Shabbat for right near my The Lord knows where's your daddy But I'll take care and I'll be aware The young lads in the gloaming For they're offy lads, the buffy lads When they get fit, they're seeding The pack of kids still the guy get in this And leave the masses green places from each other which is fairly new for us <clears throat> yeah. um, it's, uh, we've been going long periods of time without seeing each other this year and, uh, for the first time in many many years, many years. novelty, which is uh, surprising. Um, I'm going to sing a song now that um, we've been singing for a good while. And, uh, we're going to change a few words in it. Yeah, we've... Uh, from how we usually sing it. There's a, a good friend of ours who just passed away recently. He was a, an old man. Um, and he he used to sing this song. He, it's one of his favourites that um, he learned when he was a young lad of another man on the island. But um, the way that uh, Andrew sang it was the rocks around Gibraltar. Uh, but the way we sing it, we, we call it the lowlands of Holland. But uh, we've started adding in a few of Andrew's lines since he passed away. So we're singing for Andrew early. Anyway. Oh, 
and set her on the sea with seven score good mariners for to bear her company. But the weary winds began to rise, the sea began to rout, and my love Shall neither quaff come on my head, nor comb comb through my hair. There shall neither gold nor candle light shine in my bell or bear. Nor will I love another one until. Oh, hand your tongue, my daughter dear, be still and be content. There are many lads in Galloway, you need not lament. Oh, there is name in Galloway. going to sing you one more song um, thanks for coming in very nice to see you all and uh, who knows um, how long it'll be until we're back again but we look forward to it um, we're going to sing you one more song um, it's a song that we learned off our mom as kids recorded this song the day before we went to Australia back in uh, the end of February um, this year and then we went to Australia played a load of gigs and then on the plane home was the day that Leo Varadkar made his speech in Washington and um, everything started to kick off here so we've been sitting on the recordings since then um, but we're going to release them very soon so this is a song that we're releasing very very soon song is called I'm a Rover and I guess when we 
recorded this in February. It was like at the end of two and a half years of kind of um, relentless touring. Um, so we kind of felt like the the words "I'm a Rover" kind of like made sense. But um, actually, what ended up happening this year was we both just bought new pairs of slippers. And, uh, <laughs> so it's it's not that. Uh, We'll have to work that into the song somehow. <laughs> if anybody has any suggestions, you can. Thanks to um, everybody here in Ebus's. Thanks to Joan, Caroline, and Keith on sound, and Greg behind the camera, and Olive is around there somewhere as well. Um, the whole gang. It's always nice to play here. Um, we don't have far to far to travel to um, the accommodation, so it's, uh, it's pretty good. I think it's it's kind of cool when, in a way, like when things like gigs become scarcer. And there's few of fewer of them. Their uh, their value definitely changes, <laughs> increases. Um, I kind of felt like like Anamika's gig just before this now. It's like one of the first gigs I've been at in a while. Probably the first gig I've been at in a long time. Um, and I had this feeling I was trying to like put my finger on trying to figure out what it was familiar to what it felt like it was a bit like do you know before you were old enough to like just go out on your own and do whatever you wanted and you'd have to be let out to do something on the weekend <laughs> kind of feels like we've all been let out <laughs> to, <laughs> to do something and then we like we're told we have to go back to the normal routine afterwards because um, it might be another while before let out again playing another gig. Yeah. Um, something kind of nice about it too, though. So, anyway, Iheroi, thanks for coming in and uh, we'll see you again. I must away now, I cannot tarry This morning's tempest I have to cross I will be guided without to stumble Into the arms that I love the most I'm a rover, seldom sober I'm a rover of high degree It's when I'm drinking, I'm always thinking How to gain my love's company At last he came to his true love's dwelling He sat him down there upon the stone And through our window he whispered softly Is my true lover within the tone? I'm a rover, seldom sober I'm a rover of high degree It's when I'm drinking I'm always thinking How to gain my love's company She raised her head then from off her pillow She raised the blanket from off her breast And through her window she whispered softly Who is disturbing me from my night's rest? I'm a rover, seldom sober I'm a rover of high degree It's well and drinking, I'm always thinking How to gain my love's company Get up, get up now, it's your true lover Get up, get up now, let me in For I am weary of my long journey And I am wet right into the skin I'm a rover, seldom sober I'm a rover of high degree It's when I'm drinking, I'm always thinking 
How to gain my love's company She raised her head then From off her pillow She raised the set And she let him in And they were locked in Each other's arms Until the long night Was past and gone I'm a rover Seldom sober I'm a rover of high degree It's when I'm drinking I'm always thinking How to gain my love's company I'm a rover Seldom sober I'm a rover of high degree It's when I'm drinking I'm always thinking How to gain my love's company I'm a rover Seldom sober I'm a rover of high degree it's when I'm drinking, I'm always thinking How to gain my love's company Carlo sounds so there's one song that mentions Carlo in it anyway so oh. overheating a little bit here I I am a roving journeyman I go from town to town and wherever I get a job of work I'm willing to sit down With my bundle on my shoulder and my graft and tool in hand So around the country I do go, I'm a roving journeyman When I come to County Carlow, the girls jump for joy Says one unto the other, right here comes a roving boy Some greets me with a bottle and the others with a dram And the toast goes round the table to the roving journeyman Fiddly out and out a little dumb and Diddly out all day, the out and out a little dumb and diddly out all day, the out and out a little dumb and diddly out all day, the out and out a little dumb and diddly out all day. Well, I hadn't been in Aberdeen a day but two or three when the miller's lovely daughter said she wanted to marry me. She told me that she loved me and she took me by the hand. She went home and told her mother that she loved the journeyman. Walk away, you silly girl, don't bother me no more. How can you love a journeyman you never seen before? Oh, hold your tongue now, mother dear, and help me all you can. So round the country I will go with the roving journeyman. Diddly out and paddle, little dum, diddly out all day. The out and paddle, little dum, diddly out all day. The out and paddle, little dum, diddly out all day. The out and paddle, little dum, diddly out all day. Well, I took my pick into my hand, and this to her did say, I'll marry you when I return, and softly stole away. For every town that I go to I get a new sweetheart And it breaks my heart so sorely when from them I have to part For I am a roving journeyman I go from town to town And wherever I get a job of work I'm willing to sit down With my bundle on my shoulder and my graft and do the nan So around the country I go I'm a roving journeyman Diddly head and diddly little dumb and diddly head all day Head and dead and diddly little dumb and diddly head all day Head and diddly little dumb and diddly head all day Head and dead and diddly little dumb and diddly head all day Head and diddly little dumb and diddly head all day Head and diddly little dumb and diddly head all day 